All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of our bi-weekly update, where we can bring you all the thoughts that are happening, and uh, the guys can tell you exactly what's going to happen in the future. Not me, but I'm sure Mike, Ken, Zach, Peter, they, they can all tell you what's going on. At any rate, uh, good to see you all. You know, I like to start by going big. So going big for myself is uh, this time about relaxation and rest. So I've got a bit of time off here for a bit, and for me, it's about rejuvenation. Uh, reading some things I haven't had time to read, uh, making sure the last couple of weeks here before school starts are uh, productive for my daughters as we've had kind of a, a wonderful summer. It's been a little bit unstructured, if you will. But there's all sorts of great things I find about August, which are tomatoes, flowers, uh, weather, markets going up. We don't know that for sure, but these are all fun things for myself. So there's a bunch of gratitude for myself and going big. Uh, Ken, how about yourself? Uh, thank you, Chris. Good morning, everybody. Good to be here with you all. Mine is my wife's birthday was yesterday, so we had a chance to celebrate her birthday. Uh, she had a day off, basically, with the kids and got a chance to pamper herself. And also old friendships. We had, a, we had an event here in town recently and just wanted to, uh, I had a chance to spend some time with an old friend from about 20 some years ago. And uh, so that was good to rekindle some old friendships. I'm sure you all have some something like that as well in, in your life too. So it's just fun to talk and, and, and catch up and tell some old stories about the things we've done in the past. So I'm grateful for that. So back to you, Chris. Rock, and thank you very much, Ken. I appreciate that. How about yourself, Zach? Yeah, thank you, Chris. Um, for me today, just unbelievably grateful for all the amazing people in my life. I uh, had the opportunity to have dinner with the people that actually introduced me to Gentian four and a half years ago. And uh, as I was driving to, the, to their house for dinner, I was going through and just by their introduction to Gentian, to our team, they changed the course of my life with one introduction. And it was unbelievably humbling moment to think about and also inspiring to think of how can I seek out those opportunities for others, right? With all the different communities that I'm in and, and uh, different connections that I have on a daily basis, how can I connect them to their people that would help them or just to to be there for other people so just unbelievably humbled by the really amazing life that i have and the people in it awesome thank you very much i appreciate that zach uh how about yourself michael thanks chris um so uh i'm grateful for angie downstairs and uh just the accountability that we have on our team here um for those of you who have been in the office recently, you know where Angie sits and there's some accountability every morning when I come into the office. And if I'm more than a minute late, I uh, I have to face Angie immediately. So that's more than enough to uh, to continue to help myself get a little bit better, get here at time in the morning and uh, you know, with everybody else around me, you know, the support that we have here truly, it's something to be grateful for. Fabulous. I'll have Lisa share hers a little bit later as well, but thank you guys. I appreciate that. And uh, how about you, the viewer? What, how about your gratitude? Oh, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Well, um, congratulations on that as well. I'd just like to make sure that you guys uh, get your turn as well. And, you know, it was kind of interesting. I was at a yard sale recently and I don't know, my mother loves garage and yard sales. So we went to a, a garage sale and they had a TV, kind of one of those cool TVs for 50 bucks. And the only problem is the volume didn't work. So at that price, I couldn't turn it down. So at any rate, uh, as we move on here, I wanted to take a look at some of the things that we have um, on a go forward basis. You guys have heard things about um, inflation, markets dropping. Um, you've heard things about and experienced, I guess, this as well. How about the other side of the equation? I had a conversation that was very interesting the other day. Um, with somebody and it's talking about what may happen 18 months out or 24 months out. We've had such high inflation on this. What happens if we actually have deflation? You've talked about your social security going up. You've talked about, you know, it might go up 10% this year. You talked about IVOX. What happens to these kind of items when we actually have a time where a cost of living goes down? Could our social security have a drop if we have a negative 2% cost of living adjustment? Theoretically. So the thing is, remember, what goes up must come down. One of the biggest things I had somebody, I won't mention their name, but I was at a, a car show just yesterday, right in the parking lot of, the, of a club right next to us. And they said, hey, you know what's happening? You know why gas prices went down? I mean, this is, it was like, it was Eureka. Oh my gosh, nobody knows this, he said. You know, you know why that happened? You know why that happened? And I, of course, was expecting to say there was more production, this and that. But I know exactly what it was, because years ago, I learned this from a sage um, advisor that we know called Mick Murray. And that is when prices go up, especially gas prices, guess what people do? 
they don't drive as much. Guess what's happening right now? Gas prices are dropping. Check out why. What aren't people doing? They're not driving as much. They're hesitating on driving. They're carpooling. They're not driving those massive RVs. In anyway, it's very interesting to watch. There's also some supply and other issues, but it was funny. This to him was like Eureka, like nobody knew it. I mean, I'm an advisor, I probably should have an idea, but it was very funny to see those kind of conversations come out as if I knew nothing about it. Um, so it's fun when people ask you a question and then tell you how smart they are. Never sure if you've heard that before, but the question was only to see them telling you why they're so smart. So I just listened kindly, I smiled, and I had a choice to either be right or be kind. I chose being right. No, I'm just kidding. I chose being kind. I just chose to listen. I chose to listen as we went along because I think that's a, one of the best things. Some people just want to be heard, want to be heard their opinion, and it wasn't harmful. He wasn't telling a lot of people, so I thought that was interesting. But again, as we start to head into August, you know, you're going to find things like tending gardens, preparing for school. Um, there's a wonderful album I think everybody listens to on the first of August, which I did two days ago. Uh, it's called August and Everything After by the Counting Crows. So, of course, everybody plays that the first day of August and beyond. I know everybody does that. Or maybe it's just me. But either way, I came in and played it during our meeting here at the office. Um, but it's a wonderful time. It starts to head into football season. It starts to head into fall. It starts to head into colors coming out in trees, leaves. Um, those are all things, wonderful times of reflections. Many of us have our best reflections sometime in the September time frame in October. So August is a wonderful warm month here in Wisconsin, super warm in Iowa. Um, I appreciate things today, like my grandfather, who's 94 years old, you know, bless his soul. He's fantastic. Um, we really appreciate him. But, but it gives me all these kind of reflections and things like that uh, that are very dear to me. And when it comes to portfolios and economy switching gears, when it comes to what it is we do for you, we understand why we do this is a great time for us to reflect on why we do this for you. And more importantly, um, I, I'd say it this way. I think great leaders are great because they work on ways to help others be better. I don't mean that they do something, but they allow other people to experience the greatness that's inside them. Hopefully what you'll find from leaders here, like you know all, our entire team, is that's what they attempt to do with you. You guys all have greatness inside of you. What we wanna do is find out what are we doing, what we're doing, for so let me say that again why are we spending all this time going through all these designations reading this staying after reading crazy stuff um, to help you with what so it's really interesting to take a look at this and and we want to find out from you what's more most important one of your three or four keys it doesn't have to be a ton of them so we've got a lot that we're doing in that as well and a lot of the questions i think you'll find over summer are um why is the market going up you know what was july might my statement ever go up again? And the answer is it probably will. We'll have Zach talk more about that. Um, there's a lot of financial planning that can be done in the summers as well. Um, but again, it tends to be kind of a sleepy time. Uh, I know with, with a lot of the different rules and regulations, they're talking back and forth in Congress about different laws, there's elections going on. Uh, we'll keep you posted on what you need to know. But as we look at it all, really the key is to remain calm, um, have faith, patience, and discipline. Those are the things that help us always get better in what we're doing. Um, and that's really what we do in this uh, August timeframe too. It's beginning to build for the fall, beginning to build for our meetings coming up in these uh, following quarter and then the, the fourth quarter as well. So that's a lot of what we have going on. I'll stop there. Uh, but what I'd like to do, if I may, is pass it over to Zach for some of Zach's facts. Zach, Zach what's been going on that we should know about in markets? I hear there's a couple of interesting things happening in small cap growth, the markets in general. Yeah, you're exactly right, Chris. And um... We all know when we looked at the statements at the end of January or end of June, it may not be a number that we were very pleased with. We don't like to see it either, but like Chris mentioned, just um, what must go up must come down, what must go down must go back up. And we really saw that over the last month. So we'll give the year to date number and then also really the recovery over the last month of these dis different indexes as well. So the S&P 500 temporarily down 14.16 on the year, but in the last month, that's almost a seven percent recovery since the end of June. The Dow Jones, 10.85 temporary correction, but in the last month, 4.61%. Uh, Where we've seen the, the largest, as Chris mentioned, was both in the NASDAQ, which is weighted toward technology, and also in small cap growth. Uh, but the NASDAQ still temporarily down 21.07% on the year, but nine over 9% 9 increase in the last month alone. The Russell 2000, which tracks small sized companies, which uh, so far this year has taken the, the biggest temporary decline, 16.16% uh, temporarily down on the year. In the last month, a positive 8% return. 
on the growth side of things, uh, 21.59% temporarily down on the year, but in the last month, 9.15. On the value side, 10.79 um, for the Russell 2000 for the small size companies. In the last one month, 7.05. On the international side, haven't had as steep of a recovery as we've seen in the, the US markets, the international still temporarily down 17.52 and emerging markets 19.94. And one thing, if you've been on these webinars or are watching them a little bit later, you've heard us talk about rebalancing and a lot of other financial planning opportunities that Ken and Chris mentioned each of these webinars. And uh, we, never, we don't know what the future is gonna hold. We could uh, temporarily fall back down to where we were after this one month recovery, but if we were to project forward, this is exactly what we love to see with any type of rebalance that we made in the first six, seven, eight months of the year, because the categories that we would have bought more of were large cap growth, which has a lot of technology, which is 9.7%. Also on the growth side of small cap up over 9% as well. And any type of conversion, if it made sense for your scenario, if that was a individual security, it may have been one of those. And now that money has grown back tax-free. So. We love to see when those work out for us. Um, fixed income side, temporarily, temporary decline across the board for the different treasuries, not by much, pretty similar. The six month treasury yield is 3%, the one year 3.09, the five year 2.85, and the 10 year 2.75. So as we mentioned almost every time, just be careful of extending out anything a little bit too far as far as CDs or any other type of um, thing with outside cash that you're looking at right now. But just one interesting fact off topic of the markets uh, before we pass it back to Chris and Ken and Mike, um, a UK based company is actually a fact checking organization. And uh, as we know, we've had some issues with fake news across the board of different outlets over the last, if you're still watching it, which we tell you not to, but they're coming up with a fact checking organization that live while politicians or pundits on TV are debating back and forth, it's actually gonna scroll across the screen if that's an actual fact or not. So pretty incredible. Uh, I'm extremely excited for that one. So um, we'll pass it back to you, Chris. Don't you kind of wish you had that for some personal conversations with that uncle or that cousin? or that spouse might check the facts. Actually, it's kind of funny. One of our friends used to say that all the time. Her husband would say, she'd say something. Her husband would say, check the facts. <laughs> so she did like to make things up as she went along. But that'd be kind of cool. Maybe if it wasn't audible, but just in your ear. Oh, okay. Anyway, thank you, Zach. Thank you for all the facts. And it's wonderful to see how hard you're working to move the market up for us. So whenever that's a, that happens, it's either Ken, Zach, or, or Mike's credit, or Peter's. It's the other portion of members of the team. When the market's down, you can blame me. That's okay. That's what I'm here for uh, as you go along. Well, let me give you a theme for today. So before I head over to, to Mike's minute and some of the things that they've been going through, he and Ryan have been running through as far as the portfolios. Um, one thing that we can be certain of, one thing that we can be absolutely certain on and rely on is an unforeseeable future. So that means from things we discover to things that happen in any form. What you'll notice is we try to prepare you for ambiguity. You know, when you ask me a question, is the market going to be up or down? My answer is yes. Frustrating as it may be, it's the truth. And in this case, in every case, we've decided not to lie to you. We want to tell you that truth. We don't know what's going to happen, but we're prepared for whatever does. We want to prepare you for that because life throws that at you as well. Most of the things that are going to happen, you don't know about. If you know about it, it's certainty. You speculate it may happen. So what happens in markets a lot of times, people know what's going to happen next. I've followed, quote, experts for years in the beginning of my career, only to realize how wrong they were, which is more wrong than they were right. So over time, we look at general things like when things are very, very, very inexpensive historically, they're probably going to recover. Vis-a-vis -vis this year, emerging markets, vis-a-vis -vis small cap, vis-a-vis uh, -vis value versus growth. Uh, when prices get too high on homes, they tend to drop. When prices get way too low on homes, they tend to go up. That's called mean reversion. We look for trends like that, and those are bigger picture things we want to play. Taking advantage of those are, are very important. But what I wanted to do, too, is what this kind of leads me to is the word that I think is most important. And we operate on here every single day, and that's called nimblicity. That's not a real word. I made it up. But it's a composition of 
uh, nimble and simplicity called nimblicity. I love making up words uh, myself and a few others made it up. I'm gonna put it in the dictionary because you wanna be very, have the ability to be nimble, move, be able to react to whatever occurs, more importantly, respond to whatever occurs. But anyway, I love the word nimblicity. It's one of those things that you'll make up and be able to use today. Use that in a sentence with somebody. I bet you they won't even notice it. Say, oh, you should have seen the nimblicity with which that athlete performed, you know, whatever it was. It's a good one. So I'll give you that sort of a dad joke, sort of a reality, if you will, too. But I wanted to um, at least throw that out to you because I believe, again, that unforeseeable future is the one thing we can be certain of. So uncertainty is the only certainty. Let's be prepared for it in life, in portfolios, in planning, politics for sure. We have no idea what the heck's going on there. Um, you know, some cases right now, people are stirring up a beehive, but that's what politics is about. It's poly meaning many and ticks being blood sucking insects. So that's my definition of politics. Anyway, with that, why don't we pass this off to Michael? Michael, what do you have for us? What should we know about? I know you should talk to all the students out there. What do you have for students? People who were students. Thanks, Chris. Um, yeah, so absolutely. And we're starting to ramp up some of the meetings with our uh, with our partners. We got four, uh, I think tomorrow I have, and three on Friday. So really looking forward to bringing some of those uh, some of that information back to back to everybody. But uh, for today, I really want to talk about student loans real quick. Um, the emergency forbearance that was put into place due to coronavirus is going to end at the end of August. Um, there is a little bit less speculation that it's going to be extended, which is something that has happened in the past. Usually that's come a few months ahead of time before it's actually happened. Um, and any sort of word on any sort of forgiveness, we should know by the end of the month. Um, and we're not gonna speculate on whether that's gonna happen or not. But what I do wanna talk about is some of the repayment strategies. And uh, there's a lot of options available for different student loan bower bower <laughs> borrowers sorry, and uh, um, just their options for, uh, for being able to afford those payments, because this is something that we've now grown accustomed to not having to pay. And the idea of having a two, 300, sometimes up to like six or $700 a month payment come back out of left field, uh, we got to make sure that we can take care of that. So if you know anybody who has student loans or anything like that, please use this as a resource. I can go into depth, any of us can, about student loans in general and just kind of talk about the different strategies that are available and exist for you. Um, I know a lot of the people watching this and a lot of our great clients that are, that are viewing this, this might not affect you directly, but if you have grandkids or children, anybody like that, I would encourage you to go as far as even sharing some of these uh, bi-weekly updates with them. You know, some of this information that we share is information that we provide to you to provide to everybody. And we wanna make sure that that continues to happen. So thank you, Chris. Mike, can I go out and get a student loan and just have it forgiven immediately? Is that a strategy we should look at? Unfortunately, if you're gonna go out and get a federal student loan, that means you're back in school. So I don't know if you're planning on getting, uh, uh, getting another degree or what your yeah. situation okay. is. So. <laughs> I just thought there might be a planning strategy we could share with Ken. Well, what's interesting, it's a little known fact, you know, Mike is a very peaceful guy, but recently he got into a fight. He got into a fight with one, three, five, seven, and nine. And he said, man, the odds were against me. Anyway, so what I'd like to do is, is at this point, pass this over to Ken for Ken's Corner. Ken, are there any planning ideas, anything that we should know about this time of year? I know there's a lot we're planning for in the fall. We're in this interesting transition from correction to potential recovery. Uh, any thoughts on what we should be doing on the planning side? Yeah, there's a couple of things, Chris. Thank you very much. And uh, I heard a great line the other day. I thought I'd share it with you. The market isn't the economy. And, uh, and a lot of times we, we associate, you know, how the economy is doing with how the markets are going to do. And in July was a great example, as, as Zach indicated, you know, the economic numbers that came out in July typically weren't great. I mean, yeah, maybe there are some good ones that came out in certain categories, but for the most part, they weren't that great, yet the markets went up. And so just to, just to keep that in mind is that the market isn't the economy and the market tends to look forward six to 12 months you know, on average, if you will. And so you're going to, you're going to see different, you know, indications there in the market that are not in the economy. And that's, that's the challenge of investing. And a lot of people associate those two together and they, they really are two separate things. So just wanted to bring that up to you all there. Um, some planning ideas. I got a half a dozen calls recently. There must've been something on the news or something written or some news article about ETFs um, are a safer strategy than mutual funds and stocks. Uh, ETFs, exchange traded funds, right, is a, is a strategy. It's a way to invest money. Um, 
that is not true about the risk associated with all these. So risk equals reward. No matter what type of investment we're looking at, that's what we have to associate what it's going to do for us or what it could do for us or what it's not going to do for us. And so when we look at that, that's all about risk reward. That's all about how we structure the strategies that we do talk about with you all. Um, also, alternatives come into play there nicely as well. So again, that's, that, when I heard that one, I, I had to stop that one right away. I wanted to bring that out to you all because there are different types of investments that are out there. We use them for different situations and different strategies for you all. So it really comes down to mean variance optimization. That's really the fancy word for risk and reward and how we put it all together for you. Uh, but we have thought about recessions. We've thought about how do we generate income during this time frame? Uh, how, do we, how do we make sure that your income is there for you when you need it the most, when we're in a good market and, and in not so, not so much a good market? So just wanted to, uh, to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, also, the, the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates, as a lot of you know. That isn't a, um, that isn't a secret out there by any means. Uh, but when I listen to some of the people that are in the steel industry, I had some nice conversations over the last weekend with some people that are in the steel industry. They bought steel two months ago at a very high price and now are selling it at a very low price because demand has, hasn't been there. Um, so some of, the, some of the people in different industries already think we're in a recession. We're going through that right now um, because of what they're seeing. And some, some, some don't. And so that's always the challenge is, are we in a recession or not? But the one thing we can relate to you all on that is to say, if we're highly levered, if we have a lot of debt with, with some uncertain income behind all that, that's what leads to problems if we are going into a recession and when we go into a recession for, from a client standpoint, from a money standpoint. Those who have little to no debt, uh, not highly levered at all with some good predictable income coming in, probably are going to weather the storm pretty well. And so that's really how you would, I think you take a look at whether we're in a recession or not and what it means for us as far as our own scenario there. So with that being said, I'll pass it back over to Chris. Awesome. Thank you very much, Ken. I really appreciate that. There's a few things when you go on and you look at uh, vehicles for investments. There's, there's only, I think, 4,500 or so stocks in the stock market. And there's 17,000 ways in mutual funds that there were uh, to combine those and put those together. So you start to look at some of these equations when there's a lot of different ways. And again, it's all about, as Ken said, risk. So that's really helpful, Ken. Thanks for bringing that up as well. Um, a couple of things I'd like to just touch on here too. Um, some things that we can see in the markets. Um, private equity at a record pace has been purchasing public companies. You heard recently in the area of Kohl's potentially being purchased, right? But you're seeing uh, during this swoon, there's so much cash out there, still at a relatively low price, but there's so much cash in coffers for private equity for individuals. Banks don't have to raise interest rates because they don't need to draw in deposits by giving you higher interest rates. People are still leaving money in cash. Despite markets being at record lows, I think Zach talked a few times ago, several sessions ago about when you do have a 20% correction, what the likely outcome is 12 to 18 months. And it was very positive. So despite that, people don't act on that. They tend to wait till it happens. Then they lament the fact that they didn't put money in when things looked ugly. So the key is in order to do well in markets, if you want to, um, let's say you can't time it, but if you want to put money in when there's a 20% correction, it may become 30, you may look silly for a while. And this is what I tell people, should I put money in the market? Well, you may look silly for a little while, but in the end, historically, you look like a, a hero. So that's a big one that we've seen as well. Um, but I wanted to mention there's more cash on the sidelines still than ever. You know, when you look at what people will do with it, and this is what this gentleman was talking to me about the other day as well at the, at the car show. Um, he, was a, he was a roving individual, one-man economist. But at any rate, he had said, you know, with all this money out there, you know, the, you know what's happening. You know, I, it was just hilarious as went across. The recipe for an upturn, the recipe for there being a ton of cash out there, what are people going to do with their cash? Well. They're leaving it in banks. They're not buying a whole lot of stuff. You've seen record reduction in purchasing in many different categories. Those categories that post COVID everybody bought, bought, bought are coming out now uh, and you're seeing massive sales. Walmart the other day had a massive clearance because they have so much inventory coming in, they can't sell it all. So you're gonna start to see things. This is a few things that I've heard because it's already in the pipeline. There's no future predictions here. But if you're looking for outdoor furniture, if you're looking for things that are you know, fairly significant purchases, you're about to see a bunch of inventory come in for both this year and the previous years and not a ton of demand. So 
remember when prices go high, people stop buying, but also when a ton of supply come in, comes in, prices come down significantly. So you might see some of these trends begin to occur again, and those are just fairly normal. Um, there's quite a few things we read. I've, I've got like 25 different sources on things that we read as well. Um, and what I want to do though is hop over before that. I want to hop over to Lisa and talk about what's important in Gentian. And then I'm going to end with a quick hope session. I'm going to start something at the end called a hope session to give you two things that might end up our week on hope for the next couple of weeks heading into October. But before we do that, let's start with uh, Lisa. Lisa, first thing, how about your gratitude? All right. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to the Gentian Biweekly Update August version. I'm still in shock, but it's now August. Um, gratitude to come on this because uh, I, you know, we only get every uh, sporadic to come on and post on this uh, webinar. So I'm actually pleased that I'm doing it today because I can do a mom joke, right? Because uh, we get the dad jokes all the time. So, um, or should I say mom joke? Um, so, um, and this is actually appropriate today. So when do you go at red and stop at green? When you're eating a watermelon, it's National Watermelon Day today. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, as long awesome. as with our bi-weekly update, it's National Watermelon Day. Yes, August the 3rd is National Watermelon Day. So enjoy nice. a slice with the closest people in your life. Um, everyone loves a good watermelon. So there you go. And then again, on next uh, Wednesday, August the 10th, it's National S'mores Day, which is unusual for the middle of August, you know, that you would be cooking out and getting s'mores on the grill there so and then the Wednesday after we have another Gentian bi-weekly update so that's always fun and then also we have our August birthday club on that Wednesday August 17th and these little uh, invitations have been mailed out to all our lovely clients who have the birthdays in August so that's fun so if you've received one of these please um, respond we'd love to see you we always enjoy and especially in the summer, because we can um, have s'mores and eat watermelon, right, outside. So there you go. It's always fun. Um, and then Wednesday after August the 24th, we have limited office availability due to us our having a professional development day. So between like 11 and 3.30, you know, we'll be um, in a group meeting, getting all our gend up on all our stuff for you. Um, but we will answer um calls and emails before and after that. So it's still, we're still available. And then the Wednesday after that, August the 31st, which is crazy, end of August, um, is our another Gentian bi-weekly update. So um, there you go. And now I feel melancholy. Okay. <laughs> All right, back to you, Chris. By the way, uh, just so you know, uh, Lisa's come up with another brand of dog. She actually uh, is, Bread, a watermelon, and a collie to call it a melancholy. So that's her new breed of dog. She wants to sell to you as well. So that's a that's a great dad joke right there. I totally appreciate that one. Uh, but I want to start something to do with the hope session. One thing that you know, I'm a hope dealer. I'm a hopeless hope dealer. I love offering hope. There's a lot of hope that's out there. So we hear a lot of the bad stuff that's happening in the economy. Talk about what hits the news. Talks about it all the time. Your friends, your spouse, your cousin, people you meet on the street, maybe talking about the rust. So, so let me start with a, a hope session, if you will. The hope session might also have to do with some of the technologies that are out there. But one thing I really took a look at recently, there's something called, uh, there's a new cancer drug. And the new cancer drug they're talking about, and this was in Trends Magazine, just uh, Trends, I get a, a huge program on Trends here. And recently, there's a, a new drug, it's called Dostarlimab. You've probably all heard of it, Dostarlimab, right? You've all heard of that for immunotherapy. The amazing thing about it is it's actually, they believe one of the leading candidates to eradicate uh, cancer, cancer in almost any form. So it has massive, there's dreaded, uh, you know, smallpox, tuberculosis, and polio were once the most, uh, they killed most people on earth, by the way. And that's why we had such an incredibly short lived life because if you got these, that was the end of our life. But for all practical purposes now, they're extinct. We vaccinated the way vaccination means you kill that disease, right? Inoculations mean you boost up somebody's immunity. So we're inoculating against COVID. We have eliminated and vaccinated against some of these others. But what's interesting too is cancer on the other hand has been a, a massive challenge. So with some of these new discoveries, we're finding ways that may actually be able to cure the thing that is one of the biggest killers that most people fear as we also age. 
So interesting to watch. We'll keep you more with uh, up on that as that continues. But there's some massive hope on the future. And a lot of it's due to new ability to research, more money being spent on it across all categories. Uh, for instance, breast cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer. These have all had massive increases in expenditures as far as research and also it, as far as massive expenditures in health care. So we might find a way to reduce those bills dramatically, more importantly, to extend healthy life amongst all of us, which we enjoy. The second hope dealer I want is, is also on the health front. Um, you guys have heard of gene editing. So a lot of people have a gene that allows, um, uh, causes, if you will, the, um, what is it called, cholesterol to coagulate in your veins, right? And that causes heart disease over time. What they're finding with gene editing, I think it's a PSK4, something like that, one of the genes that we have, they are able to actually turn it off, which would allow you not to have cholesterol forming in your veins. And it's one of the biggest issues that go on with heart disease. So you start looking at some of these items that are going, this is actually something that with gene editing, we may also be able to cure one of the biggest killers in America, which is heart disease. Now, the most important thing here, one of the biggest killers in America, I think of the human condition is lack of purpose. So I think one of the biggest things we need to find is what is it that we continue to promote our purpose once we retire, once we move on, once maybe a spouse passes away, we're still here for a reason. So what we're gonna support with you for some of you who'd like to in the future is um, purpose. What am I here for? Let's redefine it. Let's get some clarity around it light a fire around it and we can move on. There are so many things here that you will, you've got so much greatness inside you. Sometimes it's hard to recognize it unless somebody else helps you pull it out, realize what that is and offer it to other people. So in some cases, we've had a lot of training or ability to um, ask some great questions to help you discover it and then apply it. So we'd like to do that in the future again for those who would like to as well. But I thought there's a couple of hope, there's all sorts of hope if you continue with the automated, uh, what is it, um, AI, um, uh, all sorts of things that are talking about like automating. Like if you've ever been to a McDonald's, McDonald's right now, when you go to it, this is what one of my clients has said, it's the most frustrating experience I've ever had. How about if it was completely automated? You drive up, you order, and what you want shows up automatically out the window and you don't have to worry about somebody wandering around a car, sitting in the parking lot for 20 minutes, waiting for you know your fries to be done or whatever it is. These are all the kind of things when it comes to hope that technology is offering. So there's always a good side and there's always a side that we have to take a look at, um, which is the rough side of technology. So we'll do both. I wanted to end this session today with the hope deal, with a, with a hope session. And I'll do that more. I'll give you one or two ideas that we're finding that are pretty amazing in both hope for health. More importantly, if I find them for hope for personal, how we feel, how we can deal with the world, uh, we'll offer those as well. Because there's a lot out there I think that needs to be talked about that isn't. So if we can be just a modicum or a little tiny bit of that hope for you by offering you some of those ideas, we hope to do that as well. <laughs> I get it, we hope to do that. With that anyway, I'd like to say thank you from Gentian here. We love helping you with your retirement. We love helping with you all the questions you ask us. Uh, we love helping the people that you've introduced to us. I wanna say thank you. We've had a wonderful, wonderful first six months of people you've introduced to us and they're, they're wonderful, kind people we're able to help. Uh, we really appreciate those introductions. We still have room to do that. That's why the team has expanded over time. We enjoy seeing the younger uh, members of your family as too. It's great, even if it's just a quick touch and saying, hey, what should I do for my 401k? But I want to say that gratitude to your introductions of introducing great people to us uh, continues. And I want to say thank you. It's what keeps our team here healthy, busy, and completely um, uh, constantly looking for great ideas to make sure that we're helping both you, most importantly, and those that you introduce to us as well. So with that here from Gentian, helping you plan it, live and give it, this is Chris Doty on behalf of our entire team. Signing off for today. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful August, if you will. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you.